on, everybody? Welcome to episode 317 of the Greatest Combat Sports and Coach Show in the entire universe to fight podcast. I'm your host, Serge Vicente, and today we have a great guest for you guys today. This dude is one half of, honestly, my favorite duo in boxing. This show is solid. We're talking about, obviously, the Zone Boxing Show with none other than Barack Best. Barack, brother, what it do? Welcome to the Fight Podcast. So you mean to tell me it took me 316 tries to get on this podcast? That's what happened? Hey, hey brother, I, I, I've been shooting my shots since I was like at 15. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, brother? I'm good, man. Thanks, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Oh, bro, absolutely, man. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. And and seriously, man, you, you and I are honestly one of my favorite duos in mm -hmm. all of boxing, specifically because, man, you guys were one of us, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. It was one of the things that, especially the reason that I really kicked it off and I really started jumping into this industry is because I didn't feel like there was a lot of representation or people that really represented us. And you guys were one of the only ones, especially, I mean, shoot, going back now, you guys were with 50 a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah. You know, doing your thing there. So seeing that and going from like the serious days, could you talk a little bit about your guys, you know, how you guys really started and just your background also? Uh, first, I want to say thank you for noticing. You know what oh, I mean? Um, and and yeah, man. Um, wow. You made me feel like I'm some kind of pioneer. And it's, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> but um, do seriously you are, man. You guys really are. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank God. Uh, well, this we started out grinding like everybody else. We we had a, a underground radio, you know, the internet radios where you gotta you gotta pay just to be on. You know what I mean? Nice. And, and we we started out doing stuff like that. I was writing out shows. I was going to NYU for producing. Like literally, we was trying to do everything we can, man. And I mean, and, and first of all, we 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 would. We knew each other since childhood, you know, childhood days. Oh, that's dope. And, and we just happened to run into each other at a fight as adults. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, what's going on? We exchanged numbers. And 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 I was just in my kitchen one day praying like, God, I want to be in the boxing world. And I gave him a call and and we, we've been doing this ever since. But it started with just like, you know, just doing underground stuff. Like the first thing I ever did with Ock was I went out and bought a camera. Yeah. And on a Thursday and on Saturday, we was ringside and I was a cameraman at a, uh, what fight was that? It was um, Zab Judah versus uh, Danny Garcia. So that was like 2013, wow. 2013. Yeah. So now mind you, I bought the camera on, on Thursday. So then all, all of a right. sudden I meet, I meet Zab's publicist. Now I'm Zab's cameraman. You know what I'm saying? So when he's fighting <laughs> Paulie Malinazzi, I'm in the back. I'm in the back taking pictures of him. Barely know how That's to work great. the camera. You know what I mean? Just getting in where I fit in. You know what I mean? Like what I realize is that when I ask God for something, then everywhere I go, I'm going to go like I belong because he invited me. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I live my life. You know, so basically we was just doing underground stuff, you know, being on every radio station that we can on the Internet. Right. And to be on there, you know, and then in 2015 is when Sirius saw us. We, we did like a trailer. We did like this dope three minute trailer that made it look like we had a show that was popping. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it was it looked cr the, the way this dude edited. It was sick. And we was with all the fighters, you know, just right. being everywhere. Kicking it with difference. everybody, we, we gained relationships with these guys, real relationships. That's what life is about. And Absolutely. that 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 trailer looks so dope. Sirius was like, yo, we need people like you. So we did a few, we did a few um test shows, and they was like, This is what we want. And and that's that really kick started us, man. Oh, dude. And it's great. And tell me how you guys have gone from that because it, it's interesting. You're going from that with obviously Sirius XM and everything, and then you get to the zone. You got this this its own thing. It's an app. If, especially when you guys first got into it. I mean, especially over here, nobody really knew what the zone was. Mm -hmm. How was that? Was, did, was that risky feeling? Like, yo, let's jump into this with like Matchroom and everything that's going on. It was a gamble. It, it was a gamble, but but it was a gamble with a lot of money involved. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so yeah. So listen, yeah. You, you you can gamble for free, 
or, or, you, or you can gamble with a lot of money involved. So obviously it's easier Thanks. when there's a lot of money there. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, it's still a gamble because you're still walking away from other things. Now, think about sure. it. We had, we had thisis50.com. We went from Series XM to This Is 50. Now, mm-hmm. since 2015, we're still employees of Series XM. We could still right. host shows there, whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, to go from This Is 50 where you're your own boss there, you know, he let us use the platform, but we were our own bosses. We did whatever the hell we want. Right. You know what I mean? We right. brought Man. traffic to that, to that, to that um, website. You know, right, we, made, right. we made it a boxing website. Like Showtime would call us to, to do interviews. We had Brona, we had Deontay Wild, we had everybody on the show. You know what I mean? It, so it's, it's so wild because you guys really were, and a lot of people always talk, especially on the MMA, and they talk about like Joe Rogan and how the early days of that fan for boxing, you guys were literally doing the same thing and uh, really kind of building that, man. And that's really dope to hear. And again, hearing especially because now everybody named Mama got a podcast. Everybody, you know what yeah. I'm saying everybody's doing this and also with different you know mediums there's so many different options man it has to be dope for you to even see how the game has evolved it's kind of hard to see it from the inside um yeah, yeah. like hear, hearing you say it makes me in my mind make me say wow <laughs> i did that like no i'm <laughs> so i'm so serious man like it's kind of hard to see it like you see it i'm mm-hmm. just grinding you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I'm grinding, working hard down the whole time. Yeah, like I'm just grinding, and maybe I don't see it like other people see it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm just trying to feed my family and, and, and doing something that I love. And like what I used to tell Ag years ago was like, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Right. I this is what I used to say. I used to say, I don't even know if I should say this, you know, publicly. You know what I mean? But <laughs> all right, maybe I won't say exactly. But I used to say like. I hey man, will, we can get the Cliff Notes version. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I, I said, all right, all right let, let me be truthful then. Let me just be, be truthful. I used to say, I want our competition to be HBO and Showtime. Like anything they doing that's big, I want to compete with them. I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Though I saw YouTube could be lu- lucrative. Though I saw mm-hmm. that everything was going towards podcasts. I was like, mm-hmm. but there's no boxing show. And the only boxing show at that time maybe was like that HBO show um, with, with Jim Lampley. I forgot the name of it. Um, oh, damn. It was, it was uh, fight, some, shoot. The, the fight. The fight game. The fight game, I think it was called. With Jim Lampley. And I wasn't a super fan. Like, I'm a super fan of boxing. But, but, but that mm-hmm. show was the first thing I didn't really love. Right. You know what I mean? And I love boxing. I thought when I when I when when that came out, I was like, oh man, a boxing show. I was happy. You know what I mean? But Hell I didn't yeah. I didn't love it, but I still watched every single one. <laughs> right. I still right. watched every single one, it's, but it was I wanted too buttoned that. up. It, it, it just felt too buttoned up. It, it was. wasn't mm. it, or or you know what? And I, I feel like boxing got to the point, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. But mm-hmm. it seems like it's starting to kind of evolve now. But it was a certain point in time where it seemed like they were trying to hold on to tradition a little bit too much. And they weren't evolving with the times. Did you see you know, that? Because it seems like now they're starting to pick up. But at one point, at least it felt that way. I do I do feel that way. I do feel. And maybe that's why I didn't love the show. I, I, I still mm-hmm. religiously watched it. Um, but I think that what happened is boxing is not like, other sports it's a small family right right yeah, and seriously. what happened in boxing is that the whole culture changed like mm-hmm. everybody who boxes uh, most people who box are, are part of this particular culture this hip-hop culture you know what i'm saying yeah. and the people who present it is not no nope. so, so 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 you, you didn't change you didn't change the the presenters to 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 fit with the culture of the sport Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i think that's probably why myself and i stood out where where boxers would want to hang out with us and and we 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 chilling with the boxers and and you know stuff like that because you know in a crowded room they're looking at us like yo these dudes look like one of us yeah you know what i mean And, and and that's probably what it was you know what i mean oh dude i 
Totally understand. I mean, it, it's again literally one of the the whole reason I even started mine because feeling that exact same way. It's just like, yo, I love this sport so much. Where are the other people like me that love this sport want to talk about this sport? So seeing you guys do it, man, it is so dope. And the relationship you guys built, but you guys built relationships with everybody. And Thank and you. watching y'all yuck it up with Canelo has to be one of the best, you know, uh, fighter, you know. Um, fighter media relationships that i've seen you guys look like you guys have a great time but he has a huge fight coming up yes. you know how do you feel when you're watching these guys that you know you guys are establishing relationships with going out there with dudes who are just absolute killers yeah it's it's a blessing bro it's a blessing what, what's tough in this game for me is when you have relationship with fighters that fight each other Oof. like sean porter and and, and terrence crawford that's right. a fight I don't even want to Oh, watch. and I was going to talk about that one. I was going to talk yeah. about that one. Believe that. <laughs> but, but yeah, Canelo, man, he, he's, he's, he's a real solid dude. You know what I mean? And people, mm -hmm. you know, I think pe people love to criticize. And I think most mm -hmm. people will like what you do, but the people mm -hmm. who are going to be vocal are the people who don't like what you do. You know, and that's oh, something that I, that I realized. The people who don't like you, they're the ones who are more vocal. You know what I'm saying? The ones who like you, they just watch you, appreciate you, and they, and they go about yeah. their business because they're normal right. people. <laughs> but but <laughs> some people are envious, and some people just genuinely don't like you, and that's cool. You know what I mean? And and so they so they judge you harshly. And one of the things they say is like, oh, you know, Canelo lovers and this, that, and the third. If they paid attention, they would probably realize that I love all fighters that you're yeah. not going to catch me saying bad things about any fighter. Oh yeah. I think I think there's a respect That's what makes you good at your job. Construct there's a constructive respectful way to to talk about anything. You know what I mean? And that's just my character, you know, me being somebody who loves God, that's my character. And that's the way yeah. I've talked to So whatever I say is something I'm going to say to their face if I'm alone with them or whatever. I'm not some one of these reporters who say you know negative things about these fighters because I, I don't come from that world i come from a world right. where when you say something there might be consequences stand behind it you know yeah. what i'm saying you got to yeah, stand absolutely. behind what you say you can't just say right. things because you you feel like nobody's gonna do something till you like nah man mm -hmm. if somebody says something about me i made sure i saw them so they can back it up you know what i mean right. and i expect right. the, i expect the same done to me <laughs> No, oh, I do. I, and you know what, though? But it shows. And that's why you have that rapport and those relationships with all, all these high level guys. And mm -hmm. and again, we're looking at talk about like Canelo. Yo, in that fight, what problems? Because I feel like a lot of people are having like a foregone conclusion that Canelo is just going to scuff Plant. But Plant yeah. does pose a lot of problems. What yeah. problems do you think Plant actually poses for Canelo in this matchup? Speed. Uh, lateral movement. He actually moves laterally nice. Now, I know he he likes to stand there and use his distance in the middle of the ring, but he also mm -hmm. knows how to move laterally and jab and keep moving. And he, and if he's conditioned, and which mm -hmm. he probably will be, he works with Larry Wade, and I heard he's one of the hardest workers Larry Wade has ever seen. You know what I mean? So you're talking about somebody who really can box, and he's, he's naturally a bigger guy. Canelo's a small guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I, I I look at Plant, man. He has I lo I love his style. I mean, just how 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 quick he is defensively, his footwork. He's one of those guys that Canelo. I've always seen the only people that ever really seem to give him any type of issues are athletic guys, mm -hmm. and he is a long athletic guy. So I'm really curious to see that one. I'm excited about that one. But yo, you talked about another big one that it is family, and you got Sean Porter going against you know Bud Crawford. And to me, this is honestly the biggest step up in Bud's career. Yes. It, it's it really comes off as one of those because that's been my only gripe, if any, of Bud. And honestly, a lot of times it's not his own fault because obviously promoters aren't getting certain things done. But this dude, there are he hasn't been able to fight the best out there. This is the best available guy that he's ever been able to fight. And Sean Porter is an absolute dog. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna tell you like this: if you name, if I tell you to name the top four guys in the welterweight division. Sean fought them Sean all. Porter fought them all. Oh, he's about to fight him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> Sean is, is what boxing is supposed to be. 
Absolutely. He, you know what a, I mean? He's a legit throwback. Legit he, throwback. He is that throwback fighter. And and me, I know him personally. So, you know, you'll read a whole bunch of things. Nobody wants to fight Spence. Nobody. Because you remember that time when Spence was the boogeyman? Oh, yeah. yeah, And absolutely. that time when Spence was the boogeyman, Sean was like, I want to fight Spence. I'll fight him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he <laughs> is that throwback fighter. And yes, so he's had the opportunity to fight the best already. You know, yeah. the only one he didn't fight is Manny Pacquiao, but he wanted that fight too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So He's never ducked or dodged any smoke. No. That's for sure. So I agree with you, man. This is a super step up for, for, for Bud in this division, 100%. Like, finally, he's getting what he's always wanted, and that's a fight with somebody that's on the other side of that proverbial, you know, that imaginary right. street or whatever. Right, right. Yo, what do you think, feel about that? Why why is it sometimes so difficult in your mind to get some of these fights done? Because for some guys, they let it happen. For others, they don't. It makes no sense to me. Man, I really don't know. I'm, I'm going to tell you, one thing is, is network deals. Network deals kind of mess things up. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have yeah. a network deal and then another promoter gets a, a different network deal, you didn't mm-hmm. mess it up right there. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you know, I don't want to, it's not like I don't want to see networks make money. I want to see everybody make money, but oh, I yeah. wish there was a way everybody can be fight per fight basis, but stay with your promoter. Mm-hmm. If that's what it is, yeah. fight per yeah. fight basis and be able to jump around to whatever makes sense. You know what I mean? But, but obviously that's not good. If you're working for a network, that's not what you want. You want to lock people in, you know what I mean? So you can have guaranteed money. And I know that's good for business, you know, but, and also no matter what egos is something that's in every sport. And, and when you have a bunch of independent contractors and you have egos, then, then they have absolute power because of that. Because yeah. there's independent contractors, contractors, they have absolute power and they can do whatever they want. And there's no governing body to say, like in the UFC, you have to fight him and that's it. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. No, it makes sense. No, it's, as, as a fan, it's frustrating because you look at the top 10 and you're like, oh, these, all of these guys should have fought each other by now when, you, when you're looking at it. Like you want, it's just, even if we're looking at it, we always talk about like the four princes, right? Teofimo, Tank. Devin and Ryan, but yo, let's let's keep it a bean. Man, you gotta throw Shakur Stevenson into that mix at this point. After what he did, you talking about another, you know, friend on friend matchup, but him versus you know Herring, yo, that was crazy. That performance he put on. I think it's not bad throwing him in there because in reality, Tank is not a lightweight. You know what I'm saying? Take for one fight at lightweight, just because he comes in heavy or whatever, missed weight a couple of times. Like, and he, he, he wasn't a lightweight. He was a 130 right. pound fighter, really moved up to 140 and, and, you know, to test himself and, and prove that he's great. You know what I mean? Right. But, um, yeah, let's throw Shakur in there. Let's throw Shakur. But Shakur is focused on becoming undisputed at 130. You know, and, so, and so I don't, I don't want him to deviate then. from that. I don't want him to deviate from that. So let's talk about that. Him versus Oscar Valdez is an absolute scrap on paper. Oh, that's crazy. How how do you see that fight going down? Because, you know, people were talking about this last fight with Shakur being like the the Floyd's version of Diego Corrales. I feel like if there's a version of Diego Corrales, it's more this fight because of where he is in his career in Oscar Valdez. Wait, say that again. People say what? That... The last fight between Herring was um, Shakur Stevenson's, like Floyd Mayweather, Diego Corrales. Fight. Oh yes, yes, I yes, think yes. That Oscar Valdez would be more of that because where Oscar is in his current career. A hundred percent, and 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 the thing too is like at that time Corrales was a very feared man. He was a knock. He was a knockout artist, undefeated, yeah. undefeated in his prime with a hell of a chin. You know what I mean? And and Terrifying. good boxing skills. You know yeah. what I mean? So the definition yeah. of a boxer puncher. Yeah. So I, I think, yes, I think what you're saying is more correct. Um, somebody who has knockout power, maybe a, l- a little bit more than Jamel. And 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 he has a wonderful camp. He has a he has a good tra- good trainer now, and he's become yeah. like a, a better fighter. You know yeah, what I mean? Eddie, Eddie Tornoso, man, is, is one of the best minds in boxing, man. That dude, that Team Canelo over there is nasty. 
Yeah, I, I love their strategies. I love their strategies. I love their techniques. I love how they practice drills hundreds and hundreds of times until it yeah. becomes yeah. natural. And you see, you see, like when Plant swung it at 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 Canelo, like literally when I watched that in real time, I didn't see that coming. No, not at all. I didn't see not that. How did he see that coming? Bro, like, it, it's crazy because you saw he knew it was coming too because he happened to throw his shades in the direction of the combo. Like he knew it. He was like, all right, this is what I'm about to do. Yo, that's Canelo's crazy. a bad dude, man. That, no, that, that was sick to me. I was like, what the, you know why? Because repetition, yep. repetition keeps you on guard. And plus, if you a real fighter, when you do something, you got to be ready. Got to be ready. Got to be. You, you got to be ready. Like usually Protect nobody slaps at all people. times. Nobody slaps people at at, at, what, at um, press conferences you face to face. Usually, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Usually, so that right there, that's why everybody usually gets pushed unaware because nobody's expecting right. anybody to touch anybody. You right, know what I mean? Because right. we we all here to make money. So you're like, they ain't gonna put his hands on me. We here to make money. And, you but know, you so, have to give both of them credit though, like yeah. the the awareness that they both had to stay open handed the whole time. Like, oh, we ain't gonna mess yeah. with his bag. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, I'm mad, but not that mad. I, I ain't mad. I ain't ten million dollars <laughs> mad. <laughs> right. Dude, this I, this, I, this, I, this I really, ain't worth ten million. Seriously, bro. And I, I really, I love that fight. Like on paper, I love that fight. I think it's gonna be a lot more competitive than people think. Um, I, I, I think it's incredible. Um, la last thing I gotta ask you, man, especially about boxing, real quick, because I have to transition a couple things. And thank you, man, for being so mm -hmm. gracious with your time today. I really do appreciate it, man. My pleasure. Um, uh, so Dylan White, he got injured. Word on the street is he might not really be that injured. He's just trying mm -hmm. to, you know, go straight to Tyson Fury. Okay. Do you think that's just a, more of a gamesmanship on his part, a little veteran play? I don't really know. I'm not. I'm not into. I'm not into um, making accusations without proof. You know what I'm saying? Um, I spoke to him personally, and he told me he was upset. He wanted this fight, um, but there's no way to prove it unless you really know. So right. I, I'm into giving people the benefit of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? And and maybe it just worked out in his favor. You know, not oh, to say yeah. that it can't, not to say that this can't happen, but maybe it just worked mm -hmm. out in his favor, bro. You know what I mean? And I, I, but I also feel like, and this is just my assumption, bro. I oh, also yeah. feel like he's the kind of guy that has enough confidence in himself to go fight oh, yeah. the auto auto Valin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And expect oh, yeah. to fight Fury next. He's that kind of guy. That's how I feel. I, I like Dylan White, man. He's what he's honestly the heavyweight division right now is better than honestly. Well, it's the best it's been in my lifetime. I'm 35. Mm. It's the best mm. it's been in my lifetime. Right. And and I when I look at it, I mean, we literally have 10 heavyweights, legitimately 10 dudes that can really at some point in time have a portion of a title. You know, yes. so it's really like um a, a I don't want to say a renaissance, but it's definitely just a golden era of heavyweight boxing right now. So super fun to watch. But talking about the head, the, the head of the, the the king heavyweight right now, Tyson Fury, if mm -hmm. he gets through Wyatt, AJ, and Usyk, where do you rank him all time? I mean, that's a lot of ifs. Let's keep it a bean. That's a whole lot of ifs, but it's probable at this point. All right. First, I want to say for people saying that he's one of the best heavyweights of all time now, that's that's a kind of messed he, up. He has, to say. he has, he has, he has a lot of work to yeah. do before he gets uh, we, there. What, what happened is we got excited. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we all got excited because the fight was so great. The fight was great. Awesome. The yeah, fight was, was one of the greatest fights in heavyweight history, yes. but, but you beat the same guy twice. Yeah. Had a draw the first time. Like that's your biggest win besides six yeah. years ago with Klitschko. Which was mm -hmm. a, a very boring fight, but you won. <laughs> you won. You know what I'm saying? And if and if Otto Valin continues to win, then you got another victory. But yeah. as of right now, with that resume, you can't say you're one of the 
the best heavyweights of all times. Now, he seems to be super skillful and the biggest of all time. Yes. So if he continues, yes, he probably, if he beats these guys, he's going to be, yes. He's. I would say with that resume, beating Joshua, beating Usyk, and if he was to beat White as well, uh, he'd be up there. He'd be up there. You know, heavyweights had a lot of fights back then. You know, yeah, they had man. a lot of names, you know, like look at Holyfield. Mm-hmm. Like, can you really compare him to Holyfield? My God, for everybody. And, and especially when you really think about what Holyfield did, not just at heavyweight, what he did at cruiserweight, what he yeah. came up, the way he, you know, he did the, the, the fights with more. I mean, I mean, he's my, Holyfield's my favorite heavyweight. So mine too. Him and Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis beat everybody yeah. he fought. He tried to fight everybody who was around. Yeah. yeah. And he beat Fact. everybody. Like, damn, I don't know, man. Um, but he'd be up there though. He would definitely be up there because that means he would beat. Ev- I like for him to beat Ruiz too, or may- maybe one more, maybe one more guy in there who gets up top. Maybe yeah. if somebody's along the way, uh, Jared Anderson, one, no, Frank Sanchez, maybe by then would be up there. And if he beats one more, I then like I'll be like, Frank damn, Sanchez. he's he's up there, top five, top five. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if he went through that run, you got to put him in the top five. Easy, yes. easy, got to put him in there. All right, man. Well, look, like I said, last last few uh, before we get you out of here, um, mm-hmm. and I know you are a fan of MMA as well. You love martial arts as well. Um, and look, yo, Clarissa Shields, boxing champion. She's actually fighting in a few minutes yes. uh, for, for the PFL. Um, yes. What do you think about what she's doing in that? And should she stay with MMA or should she focus on fighting Savannah Martin? I think what she's doing is groundbreaking. And I think what she says about only making 350,000 when she, mm-hmm. when she has more accomplishment than probably every man in the sport, it, it hurts her. It hurts her when she sees MMA female fighters making millions of dollars. You know, and and they're offering her so much more money than boxing. And, and to give your life to a sport and you feel like you're not properly compensated, that hurts. Amanda Serrano yeah. was going through the same thing. Yeah. Seven world yeah. titles and seven divisions. And it took Jake yeah. Paul to come to give her her, her biggest payday. God bless Crazy. Jake for that. Like that that's that's yeah. dope. You know what I mean? That's why that's one of the reasons why I think he's good for boxing because of that. I do too. You yep. know what I mean? And honestly, in Serrano is one of the legends of the sport that people just don't even know enough don't about. Don't know her. Saying. Don't know her, and she's never yeah. been paid. She's never no, been paid. Like, she's struggling. She's one that went to MMA to have a couple MMA fights just to kind of get by, and she won a couple good fights, too. She won. Her, Heather Hardy, you know what I mean? Yep. And so I, yep. commend, I commend Clarissa on daring to be great. Daring yeah. to be great and doing and, and going out of her comfort zone. Anything out of your comfort zone is greatness. That you got to be commended for that. You you got to be commended Absolutely. for that. And then her winning, uh, you know, you know how much pressure was probably on her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. man, and I honestly, think I think that's an incredible like, thing to be doing. The the PFL with their matchmaking, it's not like they're especially this fight. They're not giving her any favors. They're giving her tough girls, good step ups for. And um, and those are those fights that would honestly not only build the the the, the mixed martial artists within her. I mean, it's going to push her. It's going to press her. So I'm really interested in this fight. But one thing we know, one thing I know, and I said um, earlier on my show is that she's she's a dog. She's going to go out there. She has one thing she taught me in that last fight is if anything, she has determination. And she's not going to go down, you know, not swinging. So, so for real, salute to her. She's a beast for that. I can't wait to see what she does, really. Yeah. I mean, she was losing that fight, bro. She was losing that fight oh, and yeah. came back and, oh, yeah. and beat the girl. Like, she, she's a <laughs> yeah. dog, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. No, but I love it. Well, brother, look, man, thank you so much for your time <laughs> today, man. Um, like I said, it's, it's a pleasure. Like I said, you are, I said, you and Ak, honestly, are my favorite voices in the boxing end. Like I said, Thank I you. watch all your guys' stuff, man. I think you guys are great. Um, and just continue, much continued success. Keep doing what you're doing. I ho- Like I said, love to do this again with you sometimes, bro. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, really quick, wh- wh- where can the people, let the people know where they can find you, man, so they can, you know. Let, you, you know, can't find me because I don't want to be found. I'm with my family, and if you see me with my family, leave me alone because <laughs> you alone. might get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Leave me alone. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? That's it. You ain't got to find me. <laughs> you so what you it. looking for me for? What they looking for me? That's what I want to know. If you looking for me, you hey, got man, a problem. They want to know. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. They want to know, fine. I'm Boxing Bully on Instagram, and, and I got a little daily show on the zone five days a week. Um, check us out. Love it, man. Well, brother, um, Barack, best man, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Much continued success. We'll see you next time. Likewise. Appreciate Likewise, you, man. Thank you, brother. God bless. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Everybody, so Barack good. Best. Man, that was dope. Look, I always love having people on the show that, especially having quality and like really fun, like boxing or like MMA conversations. That that's the best thing. And like I said before, dudes like that inspired me to kind of keep doing what I was doing and really, you know, you know, do this because there isn't a lot of voices in, you know, looking like us in terms of uh, combat sports media. So it's great to have them on. Uh, those dudes are great. Check out the show. But that's about all the time we have for today. Everybody, make sure you check us out everywhere. Podcasting is available. Listen to us everywhere. Apple, Google Play, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher. Check us out of the five podcast.com. We just started a Discord page. Check this out, that out. Love you guys. This is episode 317 of the show. Peace. Mm-hmm.